Howdy guys, it's Luke at Geek Game and Scenics, and in this video, I'm going to be reacting to your terrain. Are you scared yet? So guys, I'm doing this video because one, it gets me to reach out to you guys and talk to you and see whether there's any mistakes you've made, see if I can help advise to fix them. And two, it's a bit of a simpler video to do. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. So for those that don't know, um, when we moved into the new unit a couple of years ago, it came with a mezzanine. For some reason, the company's saying that we now can't have it. Um, so we've had to remove that, which has meant that I've not had any space for building terrain. So Geek Gaming Scenics, which is the Flox side of it, they've moved into a new unit, which is obviously me as well. But I've now got that space for a couple of months to build some boards and get back onto the terrain. So they'll be coming shortly. But we are going to be looking at getting a zone space for just the YouTube stuff as well. So there's a lot going off behind the scenes, so I thought I'd do this sort of video. And with this video, I'm going to be reacting to your terrain. But what I'm doing is for YouTube, this video is going to be edited together. But if you want to see a very long unedited version and see everything that we look at in this video, because these are a lot, it'll be over on Patreon for you to enjoy it your own uh, to enjoy it your own pleasure a bit less unedited so anyway let's crack on with this video i've not looked at these or pre-vetted them or anything so let's hope people have been mature enough to send me to rain videos and not pictures of bums so uh, <laughs> let's get cracking so the sponsor of this video is skillshare you will know from watching my earlier videos i've been sponsored by Skillshare quite a few times now and it's a really good online learning platform. Now it, it's not all about miniatures, it's not all about like building the perfect business. If you want to learn absolutely anything and you don't want to troll through YouTube trying to find that nugget of information that you need, Skillshare's got it for you and it's completely ad free. Um, I'm currently looking at the Cosplay 101 and the reason for that is I'm wanting to learn more about flexible materials I can use because I'm currently trying to make a, a roll-up map. This is detailed as a, a proper gaming table. So I've been using Skillshare to try and find flexible materials that are easier to work with with simple tools around the place and this is the benefit of Skillshare. Everything's on there, not if you want to do hobbying, if you want to do business development, if you want to do art, if you want to do YouTube video editing, it's got everything for you. Don't take my word for it. If you want to try it out for free, the first thousand people using my link below get one month free. And then I'm telling you guys in that month, you'll be hooked. There's so much info out there to make you and whatever business you're wanting to get into better. Or if you just want to improve as a hobbyist, it's all on there completely ad free. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, back to reviewing some of the rubbish I've been sent in. I'll catch you after this. Now this one's from Al Ritchie. He's been posting quite a bit on the Luke's APS Hangouts and Discussions group. Uh, and he's been doing the small uh, table on the back of the IKEA frame, that the video that we did. And he's not done a bad job. But where the coarser rubbles are, I'd build more static grass patches up around them so the rocks look like they're coming through the grass. Makes it look a little bit more natural rather than just two big circles of static grass. But for a first attempt, mate, just throwing some base reddies down in the back of your IKEA table. That's, that's pretty good, man. I like that a lot. Scott Wag has been posting on like Facebook and videos for ages. Um, so he's, it looks like he's sent like a list of some of the early stuff he's done right up to current. So let's have a look at this. So these first ones are very old school wargaming hills. Now hills like this have a place. If you're playing things like Kings of War or rank and flank games where you've got big bases, having like a perfectly flat hill makes gameplay so much better. Um, but you can do a lot with them. If you want a flat topped hill, you can do a lot more with the rocks. Obviously, he's done this with either like a, a hot wire cutter or he's cut into it with a, a bit of a knife and jagged it a bit, which is not bad. It's, you know, it's functional terrain, which is proper club terrain. Now, here we're seeing a massive upleap in his uh, terrain capabilities because this is lovely. Uh, using rock molds, I mean, this lava, Christ. Josh, 
Yeah. Look at this. This looks like poured uh, plaster that's been painted. That is really cool. Yeah. I do like that lard. Yeah. I bet it's heavy though. <laughs> yeah, I bet it's heavy. But <laughs> well, that looks cool. I can't say anything wrong with that lava effect. The rocks, it'd be nice if they looked a little bit more porous. But for a wargaming piece of terrain, that's that's absolutely gorgeous. So well done on that one, man. Um, this sinkhole, it, was that deliberate? Or did you drop some resin on there and burn a hole through it? Because it looks like Josh's massive orange. All right. <laughs> um, but no, as in, the, I mean, just the shape of that fissure without the, the grounds cracked around it. Yeah. This guy's learned a thing or two over the years of doing terrain, as in it's beautiful. And there's a better shot of that lava. Um, it's just the, the, the rock formations are a bit square. You can see how he's built the foam up, but you learn that the more you do and the lava is that good. It doesn't matter that the rocks are okay, if you know what I mean. It's, I'd be happy with that lava terrain on the table any day. And a really nice modular simple table here using rock molds and foam built up that you can spin around and use either way that's that's a awesome table so yeah scott well done you've learned a lot and uh, i'll be asking you how you've done that lava stuff because that's uh, it's pretty epic so this is some stuff joshua's sent in and this first shot is like every child's first war game was piece of terrain it's three bits of cardboard with some holes cut in it as in if you haven't done this you've been brought up too well and you've got money to burn as a kid my brother was always making stuff out of pieces of corrugated cardboard and this is very reminiscent of old war gaming with a bit of stonework on it it's acceptable terrain it works but yeah, it looks like a corrugated card. Sometimes we have to do these things. I get that. And it's functional, it's good for gameplay, but it does look like a piece of cardboard, but you've got to start somewhere. See, this next one, obviously used a bit of foam board, put a bit of effort in, we uh, scribe in, bit of rubble around, 100% better. 100% better from using corrugated cardboard. And then again, is improving. The sculpting on the brick works better. It looks like he's actually used um, individual bricks to build this up and get that sort of ramshackly sort of fantasy feel. It's brilliant. And then a full gaming table with a mixture of things from kits, sculpted foam, and cardboard hills, as in use what you've got. There's nothing wrong with that, apart from the only thing I'd get rid of is the cardboard stuff because it does look like cardboard. <laughs> But using cardboard for things like hills can work. As long as you use filler or compound or anything to help smooth it out so it doesn't look like layers of cardboard, you can get acceptable terrain using that. So thanks for sending these in, mate, because it just shows that you can have, still have a fun time if you're only using cardboard. But there's certain things you can do to the cardboard to make it look a lot better. And I just smooth off the edges so you can't see the layers of the cardboard, that's all. But other than that, mate, nice little piece of terrain. Now this one's from Sebastian. He sent over what looks to be the Games Workshop flat tiles that is sort of stuck in a, a frame and then added loads of textures and sort of worked it up to make like a, it looks like a war cry size table. Um, or has he carved that into foam? Because they're sort of bowed and warped. Or is that heat? He's melted plastic. Well done. <laughs> so he's using the crags and things that are out of the Games Workshop baseboards. Uh, so whether they've been damaged in transit or whatever, but there's definitely some scorching and burning there that's happened. So if he's left them in a window of a car or something, that can happen. But what he's done and how he's saved it, it looks great. As in this is a very clean Warhammer table. Very clean. Even the terrain pieces that he's doing, He's followed the, the same principles to the terrain, to the board. And again, it just shows you how coherency trumps like extreme talent. And it's just a nice round board. Brilliant, mate. Well done.
Now, Robert sent this in um, because he, he made a piece from foam and it's warped. And I, <laughs> sorry, man, <laughs> as in you've put some time and effort into doing this and it's warped. Thing is, I've done terrain pieces like this where two or three days have gone by, it's been sat on the shelf, it's been fine, and then at the end of the week, the edges have warped up. And this is a problem with just using foam. Um, what you could do to fix this, I mean, it's a nice piece, I'd like to save it, is I'd get some nice six mil ply or something like that, or some strong um, Foamex, CPVC, whatever you want to call it. And what I'd do is I'd get some strong, like polyurethane glue, or even super glue, but the problem is with a paperback foam, it might tear away. Um, so use something like polyurethane or um, a grab adhesive, something like that. Stick it down to it and put some weight on it for 24 hours just to squash it into that glue. Let that take and then do the same on the back because it seems to have warped on the back as well, which is a bit unfortunate. It's a nice, cool old school dial, mate. And I'm sorry there is warped because it happens to all of us. Now, Jonathan sent this lot in um, because he's using like the railway scenic mats. Now, I haven't got a problem with them, um, but you use them as a base. The only other issue is as well is depending on how rough your landform is, because at the end of the day, using using these mats over a rough landform, because the paper bats nine times out of 10, they tend to crease, they tend to get, you can sort of see the ripples in it. It's like, they're very hard to work over a very sort of naturalistic landform. It's okay if it's massive and you've got that really nice gradation, but on war gaming tables, when you're working on six by four or smaller, some of them land formations are a bit sharp, a bit steep, or just you've got little bumps and jumps in there that really don't work well with a paper backed product. So Alex has sent a dystopian failing and oh, mate, <laughs> mate. I feel so sorry for this guy. I feel so sorry for him. Hi. He's been doing like a dystopian sort of town, like encased in resin. Right. And the resin's fucked it all up. Oh, no. You poor man. You poor, poor man. Um, resin's no easy beast. Um, I'd look into buying encapsulation resin next time, which tends to be polyester resin. It's a lot more complicated to work with, um, but you can control the amount of uh, catalysts that you put in there. Um, you'd probably have to leave it for a week to cure if you were going for something like that deep and that sort of square altogether but you could get that crystal clear. The only problem with polyester resin is any exposed surface, it will ripple, which in your case wouldn't be an issue um, because it's like the waves on top of the water and then you could add more to make it better. But you still need to polish sand, you still need to do a hell of a lot of work. And this is the one thing that does put me off a lot of encapsulation pro processes like this. The amount of sanding you need to do, polishing, the time it takes for the resin to set before you can start doing that. Chances of getting your mixtures and ratios wrong and you're getting all these warpages where it's got too hot and it's shrunk. You've got bubbles because you've, it's not been degassed prior or you've not put it in a pressure pot while you're doing it. Processes like these need equipment and when you're trying to do it on the cheap, just buying some resin and doing it, nine times out of 10, they always go wrong. And even if you look at the things where I was trying to do uh, a fishing uh, stalk, chopping up a, a goldfish, jumping out the water, and I did it in a whiskey glass, I thought because it's in a whiskey glass, it should go well, and it didn't. And that's trying to do it as simple as possible. So resin's hard work when you're doing something like that. I'm so you will have learned quite a lot doing it, mate. And yeah, I'm laughing because I'm doing exactly the same thing. And yeah, it's one of them things though, no matter how many fails you get, you always want to come back and have another go. Don't let it knock you, mate. What you learned by doing this one, 
try and get an encapsulation resin or a slow cure epoxy and build the layers up at like a centimeter at a time. Just pigment number A first, number A, letter A, uh, pigment A, part A first, so then at least the color's all the same when you're doing your mixing. Do it all on a scale and do little pours and make sure that there's no bubbles or anything like that as you're pouring. And hopefully next time you should get a far better finish. I mean, this looks like a gelatinous cubes at a city. Um, so I don't mean to be rude, mate, but I'm sure you can laugh at me with that. That's definitely what it looks like. <laughs> the gelatinous cube at a city. You're a gelatinous cube. Brilliant. I mean, it's still not bad. <laughs> Brie doesn't like a gelatinous cubes at city. I might even put this in thumbnail. <laughs> Thanks for sending it in. So guys, I hope you've liked this video. And like I said, there's a lot going on in the background. Now we've got Geek Gaming Scenics moved into the new unit. Uh, at the end of the week, we're gonna be setting up the old unit just so we've got a couple of months to get all the bob builds and things finished. And there's three massive gaming tables I've got to do over the next two months. Um, so there might be a slight drop off in videos, but at least the videos that are coming are exactly what you want. All right, guys. And I'm also doing up to 18 armies in small scale wargaming, covering loads of different game systems. And I I'm so excited for this. There's a lot coming. We're doing roll up mats and all sorts, guys. So keep watching. If you want to support me and if you want to see the unedited version of this, more or less, sign up to Patreon, guys. You'll get an unedited version of this uh, for this month. But we'll be doing a podcast every month as well for you. And you get access to my Discord where we can chat. And if you do have a, a serious mess up like the gelatinous cube eating the, eating the city, maybe I can help you out. And that's what it's there for. All you've got to do is just tag me on the Discord, guys, and I'll respond as soon as I can. If you're in Discord, I will reply. If, I'm, if it's on the YouTube, sometimes it gets lost. Sometimes I'm just too busy sometimes. On Patreon, I'm there for you. All right, guys? And all that support really does help out. And also you get names up at screen and stuff if you can read it that quick. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And... I'll see you for the next ones. I'll catch you after this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah.